obturation technique indicated in internal resorption is. Before we look into the options and the answer to it, let's dive into some the radiographic image and something about resorption patterns for the teeth. So, resorption in general can be classified into three types. Internal, external and replacement. So, internal resorption is when within the pulpal system, within the root canal system, there is a loss of the dentine from within of the tooth structure. For example, if this is your root and this is the pulpal canal, the dentine from here is lost. On the other hand, external is when the cementum and dentine from the external surface of the root is lost. If this is your root, if this is the pulp, the pulpal anatomy remains normal, but there is loss of tooth root or rather tooth structure from outside. Last is replacement resorption where the root canal system that is there, sorry the roots of the teeth get fused completely to the bone, the alveolar bone that is present. So they become one unit. So this replacement resorption when you will percuss the tooth will give a very metallic sound on percussion. Now coming to the radiographic images, radiographs play a very significant role in role in resorption of teeth. It is very important to identify them. Internal resorption was all, is also known as pink tooth of mammary. It is also called odontoclasia. And the last one is, it is called as idiopathic internal tooth resorption. However, some in 90 or rather 60% of the cases, the most important cause for internal root resorption is nothing but pulpitis. Radiographic imaging of teeth is very important when you are suspecting internal resorption because see internal resorption is not visible clinically until and unless it involves the crown structure and it eats up the tissue from within. If that does not happen, you will have to take radiographs and in most cases it is a, an incidental finding. So in internal resorption, if this is your root and if this is the canal, the outline of the internal resorption is very characteristic in the sense that it is globular. On the other hand, external resorption can be of any type and as you can see over here, it can be saucer shaped or it can be an irregular defect or as in this image, it can be completely flat. So, that is the reason radiographs play a very important role. In addition to that, when you change the angulation for internal resorption, you will notice that the area of resorption that is C in this A image, you could see that the resorption is saucer shaped. However, if I change the angulation, even the size of this internal resorption as well as the appearance of the internal resorption will change. Sorry, external resorption. For internal resorption, however, the shape of the resorption pattern remains constant even on changing of the change of the angulation of the x-ray tube. So, if I take say from a mesial or a distal aspect, this round structure is going to stay as it is. For external root resorption, however, change in angulation will change the appearance of the lesion. Replacement resorption, there is going to be no change because it has, the tooth is completely ankylosed to the bone. Now, coming to certain important other characteristics of external resorption is, even the cause for external resorption is pulpitis. However, most importantly, external resorption occurs in cases of trauma. So, if this is your root and you have canals which were or rather the teeth which were completely mature, apex or you had incomplete apices, external root resorption occurs in this area because there is inflammation of the cells at the periapex. So, the stem cells at the periapex differentiate into osteoclasts or odontoclasts and they eat up the tooth structure from there. A lot of external root resorptions 
when they occur at the apex, especially in the anterior teeth due to trauma, show the appearance and they show this characteristic appearance which is seen on the radiograph where you have one side of the root. Then you have another area of the root. This is the pulpal canal system and it shows this. So this type of resorption is what is called as a pencil shaped deformity. So, what is the treatment plan ultimately for all these teeth? Like I said, the most common cause for resorption is pulpitis. So, root canal therapy remains the mainstay treatment. For replacement resorption, however, you can, de if replacement resorption occurs most commonly in cases of avulsion or replantation. How can you prevent this from occurring is if you can place the teeth in sodium fluoride, it does not guarantee that there is going to be no replacement resorption, but it delays the process of replacement resorption. Like I said, root canal therapy is the mainstay treatment for resorption. So for internal resorption, as we remember, the shape of the lesion is like this. Now let's come to the options that are there and let's try to eliminate them and see which is the most common. In warm vertical compaction technique, what happens is this is the canal. You place a GP pellet over here. You take a plugger which is warm and you condense it. So, when you are going to be condensing, it will fill here, it will fill here as well. However, it is not going to flow laterally. So, warm vertical technique is out. Second is collateral. In collateral compaction, you take GP points within the canal and these GP points, you keep decreasing them in size. Rather, you take multiple accessory GP points and you spread with the help of a spreader, you spread and make space and you place the GP over there and then you seal the canal. So this is also out. In carrier based technique, what exactly is carrier based technique is, you have an internal structure which can be made up of plastic or GP itself. This carrier, you place it within the root canal. within the root canal over here and you just seal off and this carrier on the outer surface is coated with gutta percha. If the internal structure as well as the external structure is made up of GP, then you just have to seal the canal. However, if your internal structure is made up of something else, what you do is you cut or rather you heat that area and you pull this internal structure out and only the external part or the last part where the GP is, that remains. So your concept of simply fill is based out of this. What happens in simply fill is, you have that particular instrument which contains GP only at the apical 3 mm, 3 to 5 mm. So what will happen is, you will heat the entire instrument you will place it within the canal and you will just have to take this instrument out. The GP will stay in the apex or rather the apical 5 mm of the root canal. So that is the reason why this is called as carrier based technique. And if you again use carrier based technique, it is not going to fill this entire void. So that is why this option is also out. And that is the reason why our answer over here is thermoplasticized technique. What happens in thermoplasticized technique is you take an injection and the in within the injection you heat that particular gutta percha. So your thermophil is based out of this technique. So you heat it and you inject the gutta percha into the entire canal system and you keep pulling that syringe out.
so it is flowing into this entire area and then it fills this void because you are injecting more heat in gutta percha and then you fill it all the way to your canal opening and you seal it off so that is why the answer is thermoplasticized technique